We are now recording, so a call to order. Uh, Ms. Shea? Present. Ms. Clements? Present. Councillor Rivas? Present. Has anybody seen Councillor um, Ryan? The next one that picked on me for my attendance. I haven't either. So. Uh, she texted me and said she was sick again because oh, COVID. Oh. Oh. I, she, did not, she did not let me know. Well, I, I how I found out. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. What's that? Oh well, well thank you for coming. <laughs> okay, um, item number, okay, we already did call order and roll call. Item number three is accept, uh, consider and accept GenGov minutes for June 22nd, which I emailed to everybody. Um, has anybody have a chance to read them? They should have been in the package. No, I read last meeting. For June, for the one that I sent out was June 22nd, and uh, Amy included them in the packet. So you may have seen them twice. Well, Jackie has not sent out July, uh, June, I'm sorry, July 19th is when I sent, June 22nd. Okay, so that's so the one I haven't even seen right. those. <laughs> like, okay, huh? you're right, I'm sorry, you're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> oh no, the dates, I'm just saying I read the last meeting, that's all I know. That was, that was, that was yeah, the one yeah, I read. Whatever that date is. So, okay, so, I don't, I don't know which is. Oh, that came from. That was really good, yeah, Oh, yeah. So, and it, she, I emailed Jackie about them, and she, she never responded, so I didn't know she was sent. So uh, she obviously hasn't. So we're on June, July 19th. So okay, so June 22nd, we'll hold off on. Um, number four is consider and accept agenda of subcommittee minutes of July 19th. So moved. Second. Okay. Any comments or questions or corrections? Uh, I'm abstaining. Okay. Because I was only here for part of it. Well, you can you can still vote on because you were here for part of it. <laughs> yeah. But that's your choice. Big line <coughs> might be at the end. Huh? The big line might be at the end. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Any other comments or questions? I mean, Councilor Rebus also. No, no, you were here. The, the, you, you, you missed the first half. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Any? So anybody else? Okay. All those in favor? Okay. And no, abstained. Okay. Three zero. Item number five, discuss the agreement between Cook, Cook and a Company and the Town of Southbridge for Health Plan Management Consulting. Did you have a chance to read through that? It looked pretty much like the one that we already have going, but having it for like two years? Something like that? And if, and if I may, uh, Councilor Steves. So um, that came in last week, and I asked uh, my executive assistant to put it on, and then I I was reviewing it. Um, oftentimes, we get these things. I put it. I was reviewing it, and in the, the agreement, it says renewable for two, you know, two years. That. So I went back. We signed the same agreement last year with them, and it had that same provision in renewable for two years. So I'm not exactly sure why, you know, it, they sent us a new one because we could elect to renew it, but, and it was for the same dollar amount last year. Um, one of my thoughts was to take a little time, maybe hold this to your next gen gov. And the, and the reason why, and I, and I won't put the person on the spot, but there was a couple of questions that came up during our discussions in the insurance advisory uh, group when we were talking about changing the contribution rates. And a couple of people asked me about um, how we went about this process. I've since that showed up, went and looked at the Division of Insurance. There is a, uh, there's some other listed consultants. Um, I've used Cook & Company and never had a problem with them in this community and in another community, but it, it's part of best practices. Perhaps we should just solicit and see if there's some other people um, with similar references, similar prices, just to make sure, because I fully anticipated Ms. Clemens would ask me that question because a, a year ago she asked me that question and uh, it had come up from, um, on recommendation, Ms. Zawadzki who had just left. So I didn't think this was coming up this quickly because we had the options to renew for two years. So I think we should be covered, we're at least covered for another month. We didn't execute that actually into September, but I think they would give me an opportunity or one of my staff, I have two, um, staff members have taken uh, goods and services training, um, you know, working underneath me. We could probably solicit some information and see 
think we're still getting the best bang for our buck with this, and then get back to you at the next subcommittee meeting. So I'll postpone, uh, postpone this agenda item. I'll make a motion to postpone the agenda item until the next subcommittee meeting. Okay, before you do, does anybody have, before you do, does anybody have mm -hmm. any questions on it? the managers? No? Anybody else out there have any questions on it? I just want to know if Ms. Clemens was going to ask me that question. I was not. <laughs> <laughs> well, she said I'm going to answer last time. I didn't, yeah. <laughs> but, okay. you know, in keeping with the spirit of the question last year, when I, once we got it, they said we were looking into it, we just thought we should. Um, but I was surprised that it came back. They sent us a new one day, we had the option to elect the renewal without doing a new contract and extension. Okay. But best practices would say before you elect to renew, you should probably just check to make sure it's in the best interest of the community. So we'll, we'll work on that. Okay, um, well, since we have this up, uh, so have you had a chance to take a look at um, what they actually do for us? It doesn't make sense. So that, I had a private conversation with somebody earlier um, out in the hallway. There, there was a couple of questions about what was provided during the discussions with the Insurance Advisory Committee. So uh, we're, we're going to look at sending out a uh, solicitation for breakdown of services and um, make sure we're getting what we need based on our experience this year going through the insurance advisor. Okay. Maybe I'll have that individual help me put together a list of questions. Okay. No, I d no. I oh, my motion was yes to postpone us to the next general government okay. meeting in August, pri prior to the August thirty first expiration date. <coughs> okay. That way we can make sure it gets done. Before. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. okay. All those in favor of postponing? Item number six. Discuss the count the agenda of priorities. We kind of, I did this on the agenda last time around and we postponed it because have it was one here one time and nobody had a chance to think about this. <laughs> so any thoughts and uh, ideas on that one? And I just wanted to throw it up there just to kind of get a get a bit of a discussion of what we want to focus on and where we want to go with things for this coming this coming fiscal year, um, given the, given what we do as a committee. Um, I had a, a short list of things that I was thinking would be worth considering um, since I started. I might as well just throw mine here. Obviously, we've already kind of started the drummers policy. Um, we need to finish a charter review and start a bylaw review, which may be a little bit beyond what we do, but that would tell me full council probably. Um, wetlands bylaw, um, that's still in, in, in limbo. Um, the demolition delay bylaw, which the historical commission has proposed has never gotten to us, but that may be something we want to consider. I'm, gonna, I'm planning on talking to um, Helen Lent here, somebody from their commission, to see if they're ready to bring it up. Um, I threw an idea of an, a rights of nature bylaw um, to the chairman um, back before um, the end of last year, and that was the, something that he sent up to the um, to the lawyer, and they were suggesting. I originally suggested it as a charter issue. And um, he, he sent it up to the, the attorney, and they, they were suggesting doing it as a bylaw. So I was thinking of bringing that forward. Um, also, thinking about starting town policy planning for handling solar panels um, and some of the issues we've been having with that. Um, and also, maybe some planning for um, how to develop, uh, to, add to add, add to the town's volunteer base or committee memberships and things like that. Um, anything that Anybody else had some eyes? I saw Dave had his hands up and Martin. So Dave, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just uh, when we brought up the, the charter review, and it, obviously it needs to be done yeah. uh, this year. But um, I, I know I talked with the chair already. We've set up the council of all meetings to have that direct discussion, so we get that back to the town council for a vote. It's right. well overdue. Right. Martin, Martin. Oh, sorry. Um. I know GenGov gets everything that nobody else mm -hmm. seems to be privy to, but uh, uh, the nature things that doesn't seem to be in our purview. I don't know if you could use it over to P and D, but that's kind of maybe down there, Alan. But I just I just do it on my I just do it on my list because it's something I've proposed. So. 
it's just a concern. Mm -hmm. <coughs> to add that on there, we've been waiting for that information to come back up to us through planning and development. And yeah, I've had that. Had on to the time to do it. Yep. But it's, it's there in the wings. <coughs> Denise. Well, when you start to mention charter, then you should file a review. I mean, that is not this this committee's purview. That's the chair to make a decision to, to try to find people to do certain things as with the bylaw with the charter review. Um, and I again, the, yeah, nature bylaw. I wasn't. You're throwing in some things. I I know some of them are um, maybe close to you, like the wetlands bylaw and such. Which yes, it's been coming through us, and we'll continue on that. But I mean, if you want to do something. Then, you know, as a citizen or as a, and bringing yeah. something forward that needs a bylaw, that's different than instilling it on the committee that will be having meetings on lots of other things yeah. that will come up as the. That's what a subcommittee is mainly for, yeah. unless you see an issue that could you could offer suggestions for as a group because it's a group interest. Yeah. But, but, yeah, I'm not so sure. Some of the direction of what you're asking about our priorities um, made sense. I mean. We're going to meet, we're going to try to be more regular. Those are priorities. Um, if there are things that already exist that need tweaking and need, need discussion, public discussion, that you can lend your uh, oversight on, your, your uh, organization and oversight, and, and we can lend information, that's great. But I don't know. I, I don't feel that some of that is, is a regular purview of a subcommittee, I guess, is the way I look at it. But I mean, I guess we could try almost anything. Uh, volunteer issues. I mean, there's always nice to brainstorm on things, but again, that's almost a, that's tough. That's probably a council thing. How do we get, or I don't know, that's a town thing. That's, that's uh, development. That's, I'm not really sure where that, the town manager, <laughs> that's your job. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't know who it's. So, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's nice to brainstorm, but I don't know that it's necessarily here. I would also be careful on the bylaw side of it. If you're going to have a bylaw review committee, you, you really need to, we need to be in touch with our bylaws now. Oh, we need to be in, in tune, I should say, with our bylaws now, and I don't think that's the case. I think there's a lot of bylaws that a lot of people don't really know what's going on and whether or not they are they gel with what's, that's the whole point of the bylaw review, oh, is to make sure it gels with the charter, but generally you don't do that until it's, you know, yeah, you have to kind of get things not backwards. It's got to go the right direction. So. Well, I was just throwing these ideas. I think you've got. I think you've got great. You've got great merit to, to your wants, and and I'm sure we can. But to like say, oh, we're going to spend hours doing certain things. It, it, that's what does the people want? Should people come to a meeting and tell us what they want us to? What they want council to work on, and the council Hopefully. directs. Absolutely. You know, they people should. go to a citizens forum. They tell council, hey, we didn't see this. We don't see that. We what about a policy in town for this? And then council should direct that to whatever subcommittee it oversees that. If it were parks and recreations, CHS or something, if it were, do you know what I'm saying? If it were government stuff, we see problems with your policy, um, you know, it sends, it comes here. I'm just saying. Well, I just wanted to throw out the ideas out there mm -hmm. to, like, like, what do you think this committee should be working on? I think ultimately. Well, over, over, the the next, over the next year, what kinds of things do you think that's kind of stand out? That Jenga should be doing besides the normal stuff that will get thrown out to us because it will be thrown at us. You know, forty-five or ten I am meetings. <laughs> that, that's why I put this on the agenda just to get the right thoughts rolling. And and since, you, so since you've said it, I've been trying. Like I've yeah. been trying to think in my in my experience of being here, but I've like, what would I think it was? I think I have to think some more. Okay, that's fine. Because. <laughs> no. Our title is Gen Gov, yeah, exactly. which would think that it would have something to do with the charter, oh, but that's a, yeah. a separate committee. Yeah. Any I mean, thoughts there? I was thinking about just, you know, what we talked about, like getting more people involved in government in general mm -hmm. and sort of, um, I think that you know, at least talking about it in this committee and, you know, giving ideas, whether that's on the onus of the town manager, but kind of like talking about it and, and sharing with ideas as to how to get other people involved on these commissions and these boards and the subcommittees. And I think clarifying it, like we talked about in the previous subcommittee, making sure that people understand when they can be um, a volunteer when they can be on a committee, mm -hmm. when they can't be. I think that's money as far as messaging, 
um, you know, or I would have been involved a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I think that's worthy of, of talking about here. Yeah. Okay. Um, Dave was had his hand. Just a couple of suggestions or requests. Number one, general government has always had the purview of review on all local bylaws. It is the jurisdiction of the general government subcommittee. Second thing, basically as a suggestion, if the subcommittee would consider putting it on their list, was like in view of uh, the last subcommittee meeting, that maybe discussion and review of our financial procedures might be in order. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else have comments? Dave? You know, I think it was uh, two years ago or a year ago, it was charged to the general gov to talk about what, or we don't have anything that says what exactly planning and development does, what EHS oh, specifically fine, right? does, what, and all that. Mm -hmm. And I do believe it was either Jack or John who brought up. Uh, why don't we break that down? We can put it in the rules and regulations, or we can put it somewhere mm -hmm. for, for the town council because we do have arguments back. I want to say arguments, great discussions, passionate mm -hmm. discussions of, of when, <clears throat> you know, is it a DPW matter or is it a P&D matter? Because those can get mixed when you're talking about road construction, but planning development had something to do with the CDBG funds or something like that, mm -hmm. or other funds that came out. So it just maybe to clarify a little bit. You're not going to be able to catch everything, but you know, it, it, it's a work in progress. To follow up on that, I'm, that's absolutely, that makes complete sense because we've in the past in GenGov talked about um, charter things, financial mm -hmm. stuff, as Mr. Smick said. We've talked about um, the rules and regulation type stuff. We've talked about uh, policy and procedure type activities within the council so in general I mean you know is it Robert's rules is it parliamentary procedure is it you know those types of things if you had something like that and the state sometimes have has resources now of course COVID who knows but the state has offered at times or MMA has offered at times there are people of resources to supply us with some a type of person who is knowledgeable in an area a bigger area than even we are who can actually you know what can bring some clarity to state guidelines on gov municipal government rules and you know there's always that fine line of this well the state's law is this well wait a minute ours can't be stricter but it can or it can be stricter it can't be weaker it can be you know so maybe there are certain things certain topics that might be um you know something if we think ahead far enough ahead and we plan and have somebody come in i mean i'm trying to think they came in well open meeting laws was always a good one to bring in for the general public we've done that and bring it in for all of council mm -hmm. of course they that's a bit uh fuzzy with uh with COVID again you know some of the open meeting law stuff has been a little bit fuzzy but i'm just saying those are some some topics we can think of others i'm sure given given that that line of um you know, to go down that, that idea, that direction. Maybe, maybe, but going back to what Jasmine said a little while ago, about the idea of maybe we can find, us, find somebody from MMA or the state who can talk about the conflict of interest law and how it applies. That's huge. Kind of thing. That's very important. Yes. That, that is sort of the one thing that I've never been go ahead. Heard sorry, before. Go ahead. I'm not a big fan. I, I think subcommittees work, but I don't think these subcommittees sometimes work. You know, sometimes. Uh, and, and I, I, I'll be the first one to tell you rules and regulations. Sometimes I was like, yeah. we're not going to follow that and we're going to regurgitate at a town mm -hmm. council meeting and have three town council meetings get rid of the subcommittee meetings. Right. We're going to just keep doing this over and over again. So there's got to be, <laughs> is there rules and regulations that we can follow on punishments, that I would say, or checks and balances yeah, if things aren't done, like minutes, if there are things aren't done on time, if those, you know, what, what is it? maybe an expert could bring in here, but uh, you know, we're sitting here for three hours, and uh, are we going to discuss the same thing we just discussed tonight on Monday, all over and over again? <laughs> yes. Could, um, unfortunately, if I could speak to that point, unfortunately, the state has always said um, that as an elected official, as an elected body, you police yourself. Yes. And unless there's enough uh, uh, 
I say reporting to them, do they ever step in? And then it has to be something really major, and then right. yeah, they'll slap you on the hand, they'll send you a letter. Yeah. But the reality is, I mean, I said, look, it's something you got to police yourself. And so, and that's crazy. Crazy. That brings up a point about policing yeah. yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Because then nowhere in the charter says, and I think this kind of came up a couple years ago, three, that the chairman can appoint the subcommittees, right? Yeah. But mm -hmm. where does it say they can remove the subcommittees? Member. Maybe it's a chair. Yeah. Yeah. Is it? I'm just asking. I don't know if there's. Well, I don't want to get a deep. No, 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 no. The way they were put on is the way they taken off. Just you know. that, that, that. That was tested by Gruden Haggerty. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Gruden Haggerty was not years ago, Scott. Was it Haggerty? Yeah, it was Haggerty. Yeah. You're right. But that's a good point. I. But it wasn't in the charter, was it in? <coughs> but you're talking subcommittee, not not council. Not council. I'm yeah. talking about subcommittee. I'm talking about subcommittee yeah. chairman. Okay. Oh, subcommittee chairman. We're moving from a uh, subcommittee chairman. I always thought that the way you go in and the way you come out. Yeah, that's yeah. And yeah. when it was tested at one time, they could not remove them. Hmm. Interesting. And after the judge's ruling, because that went to court, oh, and what was said that the charter is explicit on how chairman selects the subcommittee. Right. If the charter was silent on removal, mm -hmm. and that's why right. that was shot down. Right now, the charter is silent. It still is silent. No, no, yeah, absolutely. But if it, if it were to be added in there, right. Right. A, yeah. if know, there were something. In, in the course of, I'd uh, certainly relive it back. That's I don't know. Did that ever come up in the Charter 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 open for amendment. Yeah, the, um, the, I, I don't know that we ever said something. We made sure that chair and vice chair, because yeah, before that. chair was and vice chair wasn't, and that got changed, you know, that got yeah. um, talked about and whatever. But as far as the subcommittees, I'm not so sure. I mean, I, I don't see why that you would know, be a charter issue, really. I would think that would be a, I would think that would be a rules and regs issue. It's within. It's an internal council issue. It's no, but the charter is specific to the appointment of it. But what came up in rules and regs was um, the citizens' members and how they got on because there there tended to be this very vague situation where some people told some people, "I would like to be on your committee." Yeah, and, other, but, and then yeah. finally it got all roped in. So then right. I was told there was no system that made no sense to me because it got all roped in. You had to apply at the town manager and had to be date time stamped. But then still, it was up to the It was up to the committee to choose the ones that they would recommend to council. You review everybody right. and then vote on them just like when you elect the chair or the vice, you know, you got three people, well, which ones do we want to recommend council put on subcommittee? And that was left up to the, the members, the members of the, um, sorry, the members of the committee, right. finally. And that went into rules and regs. Yeah, it's not like that we made a paragraph about that so that it really, because there was no, there was nothing on that and we just felt it was, it was important that the committee had the say-so of something, that the chair didn't not only pick the three counselors and then pick the two citizens, that, you know, it, was, right. it just seemed more balanced if, yeah, if there were more interpreting. In, in, right. So that is in rules and regs. Yeah. So I don't know, there's a thought, you know, something to look at, but. Because mm -hmm. I know that, uh, I thought John was supposed to, aren't you going to be appointing a, you were looking for people to do rules and regs anyway, weren't you? That's already there. It's I know it is. In, you know, it's it's in Philip Vegas. Rosen Rick. It's kind of, yeah. yeah. Why is that an appointed thing? Jackie and Jackie and Joe who's, and who was the third person? Was it Jack Joe? Was something they were adamant about setting up. You know, and, uh, huh? That's me and okay. General Bell. Who's like, gone? They were right for, close. Okay. One individual was very happy. Both me. Sure. Interesting. And we, it wasn't that long ago, so yeah. So yeah, that, that's all good stuff. Any other thoughts on the kinds of that? No, at the moment. I think there's a there's a whole list of stuff that I think we could bring back at specifics that we you know, feel passionate yeah. about on the next meeting or something. Okay. 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 And uh, if you want, it's <laughs> a lot. There's always a lot. That's Okay, and the last agenda item is to uh, continue the discussion of the drone policy and bylaw. And uh, obviously I figured this will probably take a while considering how much debate there has already been in the last meeting 
uh, on both on ours and the last PPP meeting. Um, so any thoughts or concepts of what you guys would like to see as far as policy? Did you, I, I take it, is that the printout mm -hmm. of the stuff that I sent everybody? Mm -hmm. <laughs> any thoughts on those? Denise? So when I was going through this, there was a lot of paperwork you sent us, yeah. I noticed you said things like Chicopee, Holyoke, and then you had that problem with the uh, compliant, whatever it was, that, that, that case on Singer, that, that, that whole case, thing, yeah. right. Right. So it clearly other communities have done stuff, but what I've noticed is that other communities cite the, the basic aircraft laws, the basic state, the state has right. policies. And yeah, you can throw in, you can firm them up and, and make them for your community. Obviously, you might have to think about some of that. I noticed in here too that you were interjecting some stuff in some of here, or were these other people's interjections? I was having a hard time following. There were different tail size, different, there was reds. Okay, was the, reds. Red, the, reds, the reds, except for um, where I put that number seven, no neat definition of operator, I added that. You did it. Okay. Um, I but, added that. But you, have you, that, did you the add other things? The other red, oh, these weird, I don't know where these weird numbers came from. They, they just came up with the program. Ignore those. Um, but the, uh, the other red lines were just highlights, just to point them okay. out. Because I noticed that when I was reading through them, some of them seemed, to, and I could be wrong, some of them seemed to contradict what it was saying in the court case. That I, that uh, I said well, you have to put too much pressure on the court the case. So I guess ultimately um, my point would would be then. So I wasn't sure how much of this you were inserting. I because I, I read it and then I come across something that seemed it subjective or something that seemed like it wasn't actually part of what I was reading. Well, like 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 where I put where it talks about the regulation of unmanned aircraft systems drones, which is the holy o'clock. So right. I put a note. I did put the note in. It says needs definition of operator here. Probably also videotape to include any form of video since it goes on and talks about those things. Right. But it doesn't define them. Right. So you were so it was kind of hard to. F I was looking to. Oh. read. All of the black text is original. Okay. So, was, all right. Regardless on that, that point. Um, so it seems like there's, there are, and I would, I would venture that there's lots more, just like when we looked up town manager contract stuff before. You know, there's lots more out there to bring in and see how much, you know, really people seem to think it's okay to stray, or not stray, but to stiffen up from um, the state. You know what I mean? Like, because you got to be logical. You can't just be willy-nilly and throw stuff in because it sounds good in the moment when, oh, you're, when you're writing something up. So is it how much necessity is it to go beyond, how, how far beyond do you go with what exists and what um, new people are creating probably every day? So I would say we need to get more documentation together, sit around a table with mm -hmm. documentation, like we did once before with other documentation, yeah. and kind of pick out... Well, that's oh, so that's not the state law, but that was that's an interesting concept. Or well, wait a minute, we didn't, and then that will stimulate us to think about more things. And or obviously, maybe you already have concepts that you think for the state uh, town, mm -hmm. and obviously bring those to that discussion too. But I certainly think it requires way more than like looking at your paperwork and saying, oh, "Yeah, I'm ready to, to write a bylaw." Oh, Although I think these are good. There's some good, um, you know, the way they they set it up, and they both they all seem to to sim do similar stuff. You've got to start with the state stuff, clearly, and, and what is the law as it is now, and, and what more should we enforce or encourage, then enforce, or adopt, and then enforce here in Southbridge. Right, um, well, that's one of the reasons why I threw that, that Singer versus Newton law in right. mm -hmm. because of the fact that it's Massachusetts specific. Right, and, right. Uh, and, and they, there was the, the four components that they said you couldn't do. Yeah, that, that, yeah. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, I want to um, make sure that we, if we're going to do this, we don't throw words in that are going to get us in trouble. <laughs> right. Obviously. Right. Um, or I like the idea that there was no, so most of the stuff you read is 400 or 500, you know, somebody's put a footage in, and yeah. because they didn't put, it was, it's sort of subjective. Well, it's, uh, you know, Eyesight. Well, I see for two miles. <laughs> Just well, and they, well, and they also specifically feet. said that they pr it prohibited it pilot a aircraft flight below an altitude of 400 feet. Yet the FAA rules say already say that over any pri here it says over any private property, which is weird. Because the FAA, because it's, 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 there was a bunch of conflict with the FAA saying you can go over anything, and then and then the state office over, over private property, you have to get permission in many towns, and it's kind of confusing how. I, Clarify how you would have to go about doing that, and, mm -hmm. and I think at the last subcommittee meeting, the last the last sub uh, PPP meeting, somebody threw out the idea of a hundred feet or, or or less only, um, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. FAA says four hundred, mm -hmm. and then the, the other the Newton law originally said that it that it couldn't be under four hundred, which is con conflict with federal law. Mm -hmm. That was one of the issues that got thrown out. 
Okay. So just a couple. First of all, when it comes to the fire department or the police, their their policies should be viewed as their policies. Right. All right. Because they're 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 a different type of mission. They're they're set by a mission. Second of all, anything that we set up bylaws got to be enforceable. I mean, it's one of those things where we have a hard That's time enforcing, problem. you know, right. certain things. But obviously, you don't want it over your house because it could get shut down. And by the time you make that call. But yeah, so you you know another thing is is if you're setting the bylaw just recommendation, obviously it's the town's bylaw referenced by federal or FAA regulations and state regulations. So it doesn't have to, you know, it doesn't have to be a long one. It just has to say you follow these steps unless you want to limit the, the footage or whatever it may be. But again, how are you going to enforce 100 feet to 200 feet or 300 feet to 400 feet? I don't know. So that, that is the problem, setting up something that... Or do you even set one up because the I FAA, I'm sorry, the feds, the state already have it. Mm -hmm. And, and that could change, and things could change right. because technology is changing constantly. And mm -hmm. so get out. you get a warning, yeah. you gotta make good use of your time. So <laughs> is, is it one of those policies that you really want to put effort into <laughs> if you don't follow up every year? And that, well, that is, that is the catch is it. I mean, I think it's, it's a big enough issue since we've seen it in the last several weeks over this debate here, and there are people that are concerned about it, but I wanted to at least take a look at it and see if it's something that we should be doing for the community as a whole and take a look at whether or not there is and whether or not there is an issue there that the council needs to deal with. You know, because as you pointed out, you know, people there are people over there, there are people who are very concerned about seeing those things flying over their properties. And you know, the possibility of them literally being used as spy devices, taking po photos of people in unusual situations. There are weirdos out there. Or and people out there who'll shoot them down. Um, and there are there are there are people out there who will use drones to do strange things. Um, there are a lot of people who will not. I You'll think never most know. of them are honest. But and in fact, that's part of the problem. Is that how do you how do you how do you police that? Mm -hmm. We're getting smaller and smaller. And that's I think I noticed one, most of the bylaws that they have, that the, the ones that we did that I did find that I cited, um, say that the police of our own force. But there's nothing in our books that direct it, that direct it to our police department because we don't have such a bylaw. Would that not automatically fall on them? How would they, how would they know where, where to go with it? I mean, I, I have no idea really what state law says because it probably differs to federal law. I think definitely do a comparison and kind of finding from other communities what worked for them and what hasn't worked as far as enforcement and consequences are they effective so that we're not spinning our wheels on something that ultimately hasn't worked in other communities oh, so I think it's worth you know doing that that like work and kind of making sure we're comparing and maybe even talking to other communities and hearing what what's worked for them so Okay, I see hands up there. I, I saw, uh, I saw, I saw Dave, Mike, uh, and Maureen. I'll start with you. Yeah, you. just go ahead. Oh. Just for a point of information, as of last week, there are no regulations regarding drones by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. They have not addressed the issue. So, if anybody's going to think they're going to look back, see what the state's doing. You know, there's nothing there. But second point that I wanted to make is if the town is going to establish a drone policy regarding municipal use at the same time, I think it would only be proper that bylaws or rules of rights be established for right. the general public. Thank yeah, you. well, that, that was my thought process. Okay, we have Maureen and Mike and then George. Okay, Maureen. Oh, you call that Mike first. Let's call him. Because we're going this way now. <laughs> I just wanted, this is kind of finishing. Uh, Jasmine and I were talking, oh, Councillor Rivas. <laughs> we were talking before. It is a slippery slope, I think, with drones. And, and I do see the police and fire department as totally separate than municipal. Uh, or citizen usage because they have their own reasons 
um, and I'm not going to interfere with theirs, but but as soon as a citizen sees one, it doesn't matter if it's from the fire department or the police or whatever, or if it's sanctioned, they're going to say, oh, I can use mine too. So it has to be, we have to have one. And and like I said, it's a slippery slope. <laughs> is, is, I don't know, it, it's, as I've said many times, it's a brave new world. And, and we've got to, I don't know, we've got to, deal with it somehow. Mike. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for you. Part of what I was going to ask has already been asked by these two uh, citizens. The thing that I was thinking that maybe you should sit down and write down exactly what you want to cover, you know. Like, do we want, if you're going to fly over to my house, do you need a warrant? Are there going to be some liability issues that we got to want to look at? Who's liable if the drone does mm -hmm. damage? somebody's property. <coughs> Do we want drones flying? Around? Let's say some people are protesting on the street. Are we going to allow drones flying over people who are having a peaceful demonstration somewhere? Right. These are things that you might want to just make a list. What exactly do we want the drone by law to cover and take it from there? As I can say, there are no state laws in this. I think, I think there is a bill in the legislature now, but I don't know where it stands. No. Okay, George? If you, if you look at some of the regulations, the FAA only controls drones 400 feet and above. Anything under 400 feet comes, like at the airport, it's a federal regulation. Same thing at Westfield. <clears throat> you know, the, the law doesn't require anybody's permission to fly over property, uh, private property, but if you read the FAA circular and regulation, tells you that the town and state has the ability to set their own bylaws mm -hmm. and rules and regulations regarding uh, drone, uh, drone use. Uh, I truly believe that if, if, if you move forward with a rules or regulation or policy for drones, mm -hmm. not that any department head would utilize uh, the drone in, a, in, in an ill manner. Right. But in that, you need to be able to prevent a uh, department head from using uh, that drone to uh, check out what an employee is doing. Say he calls in sick today and fly that drone over the person's house to see, see if he's there, those kind of things. And that you, you put in a policy and rules and regulation and you make it strict enough so if the department head or whoever's operating that drone could sub be fired for violating the policy. You need to have a strong rules, regulation, and policy with a penalty to pay in the event that you violate this. Because drone, more and more people, are, like it was said, there's big brothers watching. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, they sell a gun that fires off a net. You fly one over my house, that net's coming out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not getting the drone back either. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Scott. Um, I said it earlier, I mean, a lot of discussion on how it was financed and all this. I really have a problem with the drone in general uh, being owned by the town, the liability that's going to lay down on us. Um, when is, uh, what happens if a drone malfunctions and comes down and smacks into a $60,000 vehicle or bangs into someone's house? What happens if one of our people uh, goes over somebody else's house and something happens. I mean, Big Brother overlooking the town is one of the things that I got a lot of complaints on mm -hmm. from people when right. you discuss a drone. It just, that's the concept that came up. I was like, well, why? Are you doing something wrong? <laughs> but it, it, it is what it is. Uh, myself, I'd send it back. Uh, there are a lot of other things in the town budget that we need besides the drone, especially at the fire department going into that new building. Thank you. But uh, if I can follow up on that, Scott. Um, but if how would you how would you approach the idea of doing drone policy and specifically uh, drone bylaw for citizen use? Because obviously, even if the town doesn't opts to not get a drone for our own use, I think um, there are they already exist in the community. I know the right council representing you know the people, and yeah. I'm, I'm saying it as a councilor and as the government that I wouldn't want the drone. As far as the public doing it, 
I think, uh, I don't know if it was uh, Council Adam brought up, you know, what's the enforcement? You know, you can regulate, 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 and then what? If you can't find out whose drone that was, he flies it down, how do you enforce it? How many more police officers do you want to get to find it? Uh, it becomes a big expense, so going forward, yeah, it's going to be something strange, something new, uh, but it, it's going to be tough on, on the enforcement end of it. It will be. Yeah, that's the, that is where I'm from. Okay, I right, see so hands up all over the place again. So Jasmine, then Denise, then Georgie. I mean, I think, again, like, like Maureen and I spoke about earlier, it's two separate issues. And yeah, I think are. for the fire department as a parent, if, it, if it's a safety equipment that's going to help find my child, mm -hmm. I want them to have that. And I, would, and I would venture to say that if we inform well, our citizens well. on how that is going to be utilized and the policies that are implemented by the fire department, other, other towns are already using this equipment to help their residents. Um, just like any other piece of equipment that has liability, you know, if a DPW truck hits someone, you know, the town is liable for that as well. So as long as there are regulations, um, you know, and policies in place to regulate and, and kind of like monitor, um, I think if it's a safety issue and it's going to help our residents, which, you know, that's on the onus of the fire department to explain to us and educate us on how that piece of equipment is going to be utilized. But I don't think that we can speak for every single person in our community because I think that people would want their, if my child was missing sure. and that's going to help them find my child, I would want them to utilize whatever means they needed to, to do that. So. And that's understandable. Then I guess the question is how do we, how do we ensure that the drone is used only for those kinds of purposes and doesn't isn't allowed to stray outside just because somebody you know wants to thinks they can take it and go oh I think I'm gonna I, I see something suspicious over here I'm gonna go investigate yeah and I think without without a warrant and probable cause <laughs> yeah yeah and those kinds of things yeah. and how far how far do we allow that to go yeah I do think that in the policy that um, deputy. Um, Chief you like yeah. went through with us. I mean certainly we could you know we can ask for something further to be added to that. Mm -hmm. But I think it was pretty clear what the consequences were, you know, within the department um, and really just educating people about the difference between what a bylaw will be for town residents and a bylaw, you know, in the, the town department rules and policies around their use. Right. Uh, Denise? Thanks. So a um, couple things. Way back, you commented about, um, you know, everyone's worried about Big Brothers or drones. Uh, honestly, I mean, are they knocking down the town hall doors and coming to complain to council that there's so many drones and everybody's watching them? We, you hear that out there. I get it. When we see, mm -hmm. hey, somebody says to me, oh, you got a drone flying in your house. Oh, I wonder if they're in my backyard while I'm there in the pool. You know, we all make those comments, mm -hmm. but I'm not seeing them sure. come in here asking, this uh, elected body to make rules and regulations and enforce you know that not happening. Unlike no, fireworks, in which I'm constantly calling um, and, and you know trying to get people to not be blowing up fireworks in my backyard, but uh, because Maybe they go over the dry the trees, the dry the forests, that should go there. No, they, the police Maybe are at least trying for that, and it is illegal in Massachusetts. Uh, so anyway, but I was saying, you know, there's you've got your handfuls of people, and then you've got the rest of the community, and you're saying, are they? Where are they in this? I think they're seeing it's another technology. And yeah, could do we all worry about our privacy from the blinds being open to close to whatever people with binoculars and, and you know all kinds of things? Yeah. But um, so it goes back to the other thing people talk about too: um, insurance. Would a drone be considered the same as other equipment that I've written that down before you mentioned the DPW? Why are you on the DPW too? Now, <laughs> please get at each other, which has happened, right? Um, if a drone, you know, is drone considered a piece of equipment and do we need extra liability for it? That would be a question and if we don't, then does it just fall under our normal insurance and maybe somebody has to ask our insurance cover that question. Um, because now question. it's a piece of equipment, but is it any different than us using uh, the jaws of life to open a car to save somebody and it, the jaws of life break and we hurt the person more 
and now we're liable, <laughs> just saying. And we're destroying their car. Well, we ruined their car more, but well, that, they don't care about that. But we hurt them anyway. anyway. So I'm just saying there, there are a lot of things to consider. I'm not saying any, anyone's comments about being concerned about these things are wrong. I'm saying what is the reality of the... If everybody's so happy, and I don't care how good you are, you can get sued. Even when it's not your fault, chances are you're still going to pay something. Um, so I'd ask about that. And the improper usage, I think it's been commented, but if you want to, like you say, uh, firm up that bylaw, uh, firm up their rules and regs that you, you'll be dismissed. There was a zero tolerance for use, uh, illegal usage of this unit. So be it. Somebody wants to get fired, let them get fired, you know. But I can't imagine, it's not like it's, you can hide it under your arm and just take it out. Oh, yeah, let's, you know, it's no, a good sized sure. piece of equipment. We're not talking the home drones, the little guys, or, you know, the cheapy things. We're talking a professional piece of equipment. Well, here. but, but, we, okay. but the, if we're talking about civilian bylaw, though, we are talking about. No, but I'm talking about, we're talking, there was a lot of comment about local, about the usage within the public. In oh, sure. town departments. Well, that's, that's, that's why there's, that's why I think there's, a point. there's two. They're really two separate things. To so not say more about that would be and bylaw. if we again don't have we, we hire our people and not everybody's perfect. We know that oh, many sorry. many people have you know we find out there are issues after hiring people at times. But my you know at some level people have to be dismissed and the rest are good. You have one bad egg out of thirty or whatever, so be it. But you can't you know uh, I won't use that word. You, you can't blame everybody. Let's we'll no, say the word blame instead of so. another word I would have used. So. Um, you know, everybody for the sins of one. It's just Absolutely. not right. So, Absolutely. but if we go back to how much, how badly is this town in need of a drone bylaw? In, in general, like in general, I don't think that's the number one priority in this town. You know, um, it's just not. It, it's important, but it can't be. In, it, the enforceability is nil. And so I don't know. I think on the books is one thing. But if we had other things to be really uh, focused on, you know, then, then the drone bylaw is nice, but, and you're right, federal and FAA is really what's uh, driving the, the rules right now, so that's what we go by. But should we be waiting until the state really does have their drone policy too, in order to, or their drone bylaw, whatever they're putting in to the mass laws? Other communities um, haven't. Right, they haven't. But I'm just saying, should we? I didn't say we should. I said, should we? Right. It's just something to think I about. Because if you make a bylaw, then you got to change a bylaw. It's not, you know, it's it's a little more complicated than just if it's a rule that or policy, true. maybe not as enforceable as a bylaw with fines and penalties. Mm -hmm. So it's just more to think about, more comments to, to discuss. I say we 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 move forward and we we all reach out and take a look online and pull in some documents, see what you can come up with from the 252 towns or whatever we have here in the great Commonwealth of Massachusetts, as our Lieutenant Governor likes to comment on, you know, that she's been to them all, and, and see if there's more out there than just these few that have been brought in. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, and bringing the info on we'll another power on it. George. I think at some point in time, we have to look at it. How much money we got going to spend? First, I want to tell you, I had a five-year-old son that was lost. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to be a parent and be a member of the fire department and not having a five-year-old son missing in the woods up on top of Pleasant Street. I've been there. The thing you look at is, are we getting an overabundance of these things? You have them in Charlton. There's a consortium that the police department are a member of in Charlton that will bring drones here like a fleet of aircraft takes time. You've got one individual you're sending to school if, if they decide to go that way. And that individual is a chief officer, one of the chief officers of the fire department. Now, if you were going to train the complete fire department, that would be fine, because that chief officer, whether it's the fire chief or the deputy chief, should be in charge of this department and running the department and not operating the drone. But in any circumstances, you don't see the fire chief running a fire pump up see them fire. You don't see the deputy chief doing that. You see them controlling and maintaining the man. So I, I think the really big picture is when I was on the fire pump and I was always told is the risk worth the benefit. That's what you have to determine in, in, in the purchasing of a drone. You have the, the, the Thomas Street shooting just that was recently happened here. They had drones here in a matter of minutes from state police and from neighboring towns. Again, purchasing a, a drone, and I love the fire department, it's my life. 
and, and I really hate to go against it, but sometimes you have to look at the big picture and say, is it worth it? And it'll, it'll always be worth it. But is it a necessary expense at this time? I think the real thing that should have happened, and we still have that ability, is to review is the drone a worthwhile piece of equipment for this community? Point of order. But we're, we're not actually talking about the drone purchase. We're no, no, I, drum no, no. What, is, what I'm saying is, we're talking, we're talking about we're talking about policy. I understand that. That's what I'm coming to now. Okay. And then you go with the regulations and how you're going to do policies and those kind of things. But you have to be determined. Number one, if it's feasible. Number two, you write the rules and regulations and go from there. That's what I we're mean, trying to do. We're trying to serve the system. No, it's, it's, it's a difficult thing, but we already have purchased. We're not on that subject. We're not on that subject. Uh, thank you. And then Scott. Okay, and I will preface this with I am talking about if, if a policy for the citizens. Yes. This is separate from <laughs> police and fire. They have their own thing. Right. Yep. Right. Um, yep. And I don't want to muddle that um, but but saying oh people haven't come up to citizens forum to talk uh, who comes to citizens forum me but seriously <laughs> you, and and people are going to come up and say oh well I want to spy on my girlfriend who I broke up with they're well, not going to come and no, say that the people complain about it Nothing. And nobody's nobody's complained about it. You have to look at the stupid uh, Facebook and focus on South Bridge and all those so things, all the rumor mills. Um, <laughs> seriously, we need a policy beforehand before it gets out of control because it's going to get out of control at some point. I mean, these things have really moved fast and. I mean, the library has it has offered it as a prize, and I'm not indicting the library at all. But, um, but it's something that people can get very easily, um, you know. And and unless if there unless there's a policy about it, people are going to do whatever they want with it. Scott. I, the way this was rolled out, doing the uh, municipal side of a drone bylaw is still ahead of, I mean, unless everybody's in favor of doing the drone. The thing that's bothering me, the thing that's bothering me about this presentation by our department head was it started out as a search and rescue, the little girl in the woods. But if you talk to your other department head, the police, it's not the fire department's jurisdiction. A missing persons, it immediately a search and rescue happens, it's the state police, the Amber Alert, the local PD. That's where that is. So I'm sold a bill of goods by one department head to find out that it's not even his job. So I question, right away I have a doubt in my mind. Why are we doing this if the search and rescue for the little girl is done on police? So going forward, all of a sudden it's, well the church was collapsing and we could have taken a picture from the top. A uh, building inspector <laughs> does not need a picture of a building falling down. You know it's substandard, it has to come down, and in the end you'll see that's what will be the final outcome. All the salesmanship on all the reasons why we need growth don't hold water. So for me, this isn't chairman. about what. Excuse me. Well, this isn't about what we are. Whether we as a town need a drum or are buying a drum. That was that was your committee's job. Well, what I'm saying what is, we are talking why about do we want to set law and why policy? for the town regarding drones in the community. Not, not the fire drone, you're saying? Not specifically the fire Just drone. Just the town drone. Town, town, drone. town, town. drone use town and people. town law. I got By it. Law. In, in discussing this when I saw search it's and rescue, not about, It's not to about search and rescue. It's not okay. about the drone yeah. that was on this table. That's fine. It's about general policy, about whether we need yeah. something like that yeah. in the law. That's what we're talking about. OK. Any other comments or questions? Mr. Manager, you've been listening to this. Anything you would like to say about about the general concept of a town policy and town bylaw? Did you was did you have one in Chelmsford? I'm not aware that we did. The police department had one. I was going to check with my fire department, and I don't know that it 
we even put a policy in when the police officer had it, we specialized training. Um, you know, there was some discussion before. It's been a while since I did criminal law. I did it for quite a while. But there was a thing called the open field stuff where um, if they were flying overhead law enforcement, say in a helicopter or whatever, and happened to see stuff, um, there, there wasn't any more of a search. But I couldn't tell you the status of open fields and open fields in Massachusetts at this time. Um, I'm quite sure it's a lot of people have some reservations about it. It's a tool, like any other tool that's available to municipalities and law enforcement and uh, individuals. Um, oftentimes, you want to follow the guidance of state and federal regulations. But you know, as Mr. Smith said, and I haven't spent a lot of time on this, I've had a couple of things. You know, at this point in time, he didn't see anything coming down from the Commonwealth. So. Right. It's uncharted, and I, I'm sure there'll be case law that's going to come out governing this. Um, as I said, there, there's the older case law called the open fields. So it's, it's an emergency, emerging area. Yeah, yeah that's, that's where I well, saw that. Well, the Singer Newton one. That's Singer yeah. Newton case, yeah. which is mass specific. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and, uh, and so as I said, so so there, really was, there is something in the legislature, I think they proposed it like three or four years running and hasn't passed. So whether it will come up this year, who knows? So I haven't you know, really delved into it, but did you ever have did you see any issues with it when you were in Chelmsford? Now that was a couple of years ago. And right. you know again what I think drives a lot of it is the price coming down. True. So it can be before only a select few could have. And now it's the type of thing, you know, way back when digital cameras and cell phones, um, you know, people had them in their car. Now everybody has them. So, Great uh, um, sure. you know, I think they'll become more and more commonplace. Kids will get them for Christmas. And, you know, it's, it's one thing to regulate adults who might read and follow. Kids are going to do something different. So, I mean, it, mm -hmm. yeah. which, which kids will be the ones. Which in itself raises an issue. Then, do you do we need do we need a bylaw that actually, if the kids can, since kids are not legally responsible. Do we need something that specifically states the parents are legally responsible? And so when the parents are hard at work, and that the is, kid doesn't, that is you know, true. That is the have it locked up, you know? That is the catch-22, exactly. I don't know. Absolutely. It may be real hard because you know, like these the things situation. come out in May. Believe it or not, if you look around at night, I was in another town recently, you could see them hovering. I sure, oh, sure. on the oh, second sure. story of a building, yes. and you, people would say, look, people are flying, and, um, they can come and go in the middle of the night, and some of them are self-landing. By the time you get a cruiser over there, it's gone, it's landing. Mm -hmm. right. The point about enforcement, I think, these are all, there's a whole lot of aspects of this. It's just maybe very difficult for us to get our arms in front. It may be. Giant fly swatters for everybody. That'll <laughs> 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 teach you to come flying by my balcony. But to the point <laughs> where <laughs> you're a big bad gun. I think, well, that's, no, no. You can't have guns and illegal stuff. That's a beanbag gun. Oh, beanbag gun. Okay. Because they're only going to be at ten feet, so there'll be no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You were saying <laughs> right, and then oh, no, that's pretty, pretty much getting hurt. Battles with the two vision. Okay. <laughs> I do think that we need a policy. Um, I know it's very unenforceable, but if the policemen do not have a policy, then they catch someone, what do they just say to them? Well, gee, it's not a nice idea. I think we need something so that there will be people who, who drive their teeny tiny drones around and annoy the neighbors, but there will be, I hate to say it, but there will be bad people using them too. I mean, I just left the house and we used a drone for, to kill someone. That Zawadi Al, Al Zawadi? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's, well, that's, that's a rather specialized drone. I don't know well, if you want to close that. But 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 once, you, once you get a drone, True. you put a camera on it. Once you've put a camera I, on it, what else can you put on hey, it? Hey, it's theoretically possible since they can already make guns from, from plastic printing. Yeah. 
Theoretically, you can maybe arm a drone that way. I don't know if it will work. Eventually, it will work. Yeah, eventually, it will. Eventually, it will. But it will not work today, but... Right. Um, that is your possible. Yeah. So my thought is maybe what you might want to start, for starters, look at drone policy on town-owned land and work in conjunction with the school on that. Because I was thinking, what a year or so from now, Kids football games. How many parents are going to want to fly? As, as, you know, if they want to send their kid to college and they want to do recruiting videos, and you have competing drones, mm. and you know, maybe yeah. there should be something so that the officer could go up to somebody and say, "Hey, because I might have privacy concerns, I don't want my kid in somebody else's video." Right. Um, right. These might be basic ones where, you know, if we're doing something that common, the only people that can do it is with the permission of right. written, cable access or something, mm -hmm. you know, or over mm -hmm. or, uh, the coach watershed. Does we don't want people flying over the watershed property. Yeah, that's. Yeah. But those were things we would put in anyway because there right. are a lot of these town ones about yeah. there, you know. Yeah, but the, I mean, the, when you were asking what my thoughts would be, but yeah. I, I would start with we should be ensuring that nobody but the town is flying over town right. own property unless. They have our permission. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that and, is and that will so if they can't fly over um, federally owned property like the 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 dam, the the dam right and if they can't fly over town owned property, that would certainly narrow their field. Would yeah, we want that to include roads? Because that's not town owned property. Yeah, well, there's a mixture of state and town. Yeah, that's. Oh, you can't do that. That's, that would, that's that would be almost impossible. Yeah. And probably not fair either. As it is now, they're going to, yeah, it's going to be almost impossible. But at least you have something. It's, I think right. to, to the town manager's point that bigger venues gain, right. you know, uh, uh, school activities and those types of things, very important for the safety of the children. We were talking about kids um, in general, even large mm -hmm. gathering type. Um, right. On, on town property makes it, you know, it's easier to enforce that than mm -hmm. it is to, you know, as a start. But I mean, I think you, you're going to make a bylaw or you're going to make a law or whatever it is that's going to encompass what you want, but I think with an emphasis on, on, on one things you can control, especially. Maybe makes bigger, fi bigger fines for the ones that are on town. You know, who knows? I don't know. <laughs> can you do Jail time. <laughs> Just say. Okay. Maybe, maybe like progressive. <laughs> well, we, we do it for start out with jail time. <laughs> that might deter them. They might. <clears throat> they, lose, they lose their right to use a drone. I was all about progressive fines on other things. Don't worry. I'm not always. You know, mm -hmm. Privacy is a big deal. It is, but then yeah. the, the state uses their helicopters, and what's the difference between them using a helicopter flying this close over my roof? But they're not necessarily videotaping you. There's a, or, you know, they're, sure. they're yeah, flying. The drone the isn't necessarily videotaping you either. No, that's true. Just, you and you, and you have less you knowledge of what the, the drone is doing. That's true. I mean, I pretty <laughs> assume that, that if they're looking... Every once in a while, somebody escapes from the hospital, and they 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 fly over my neighborhood about this far off the roof of the house, and um, I mean I assume they're they're using all kinds of sighting equipment. Usually, heat seeking. Yeah. yeah, that's when they're going over woods and stuff, and that's how they found people. Oh yeah, and yeah. it's certainly, yeah. as I said earlier, but it's a previous meeting, it's, it's a useful thing to have for certain purposes. Yeah. Well, even he yeah. said that has an infrared, yeah. that has yeah. the technology. Yeah. So that's how you find you. Absolutely. Okay, well, we can't solve it all tonight. Okay. Okay. That was fun. Thank you. That was a kind of start the discussion, thinking about these things. Okay. Motion so to adjourn. I think that's where we're at. Second. Second. All those in favor?